painter Hans Heysen migrated with his family from Germany to Adelaide in 1884. After his early years studying and painting, he travelled to Paris, attended art academies, and travelled through Italy before returning to Adelaide. Following a hugely successful exhibition in Melbourne in 1912, Heysen settled in Harndorf. After World War I, his art became widely recognised and critically acclaimed. His subjects included much admired landscapes and studies of majestic gum trees, as well as still lifes, figure and architectural studies, genre pieces and portraits in a wide range of media. He made trips to the Flinders Ranges, creating drawings and watercolours, as well as oil paintings of the Arkaba region. Heysen is regarded as one of Australia's greatest artists, who had an immense love for the natural environment, was an ardent conservationist, and, ahead of his time, lobbied to preserve the great trees around Harndorf. He was one of Australia's first non-Indigenous artists, to engage deeply with Australia's landscape, with his rich depictions of the outback, atmospheric paintings of the Adelaide Hills, and sensitive sketches of village life at the beginning of the 20th century. He derived inspiration from the sharply contrasting, more traditional landscapes of the Mount Lofty Ranges and the stark, untamed scenery of the Flinders Ranges. Heysen Prince grace many a traditional corporate office in Australia the way a constable might in England and became the unconscious backdrop for a lad growing up in Adelaide in the 20th century. Hans Heysen does hold the distinctive place in the history of Australian landscape art. He won the Wynn Prize nine times between 1904 and 32, the Crouch Prize in 1931 and the Maud Wizard Wollohan Prize in 1957. He was knighted in 1959. Technically, he was an outstanding draftsman. His control over line was superb. According to Lionel Lindsay, he drew as painstaking as Dürer in his respect for organic form. Although his response to nature was personal and lyrical, his approach to recording and interpreting it was analytical. The whole nation came to see the gum tree as he saw it. In 1939, he had said, in all its stages, the gum tree is extremely beautiful. First for being a tiny sucker with broad leaves shooting up like a fountain answering to the slightest breeze. At middle age it becomes more sturdy, more closely knit and bulky, yet never losing grace in the movement of its limbs and the sweep of its foliage. He was a fine watercolorist, etcher and painter in oils, and he sketched magnificently in charcoal and crayon. He was fascinated by the effects of light on land and sky, and on the apparent weight or weightlessness of natural objects under changing conditions of light, shadow, mist or sunshine. In spite of his achievements, Heysen's vision was limited. His art tended to remain static, to lack variety and experiment. From a 20th century standpoint, he was unsophisticated and unscholarly. 
the sweeping changes that wrenched the world of art and the accompanying turmoil of theory and thought tended to pass him by. There was a sameness of treatment, a staleness of subject matter, which was compounded in the public mind by scores of imitators who lacked his skill in composition or draftsmanship. Nevertheless, his honesty and integrity are acknowledged and his real achievements remain. Though Hans Heysen worked regularly from life models in his student years, he rarely depicted the nude in later paintings. Heysen drew something personally therapeutic from the landscapes he loved. In a world of artistic turmoil, he found a kind of comfort in the reassuring continuity of nature. There is a harshness to his later works, but also more brilliance and intensity. A gentle sadness in a retrospective view of Heysen is possibly a reflection of his daughter Nora's focus on portraits and still life and avoidance of her father's lifetime of work amongst nature and his noble, statuesque and now immortal trees. <laughs> <laughs> 